Sometime in the not so distant future, when the evil AI robots have taken over everything, there is a world so cold and desolate, devoid of any human creativity, any joy, any need to express ourselves through the art that we make or the things that we do. We no longer need to encourage our children to create when you can just generate whatever you can think of at the click of a button. In this not so distant future, this is the world that we live in. There is no art, no inspiration, no originality, just a monochrome landscape of mechanical precision. But let's just be real for a second here. It's not really gonna go that way, is it? Well, no, probably not. But there are some valid concerns that do need to be addressed. AI is very much the current thing right now, and if we're being honest with ourselves, it's no doubt going to be one of the driving forces of our entire future to come. Or at the very least, what's left of it. All of this probably has you wondering what it is we're actually dealing with here. What is AI? Well, it's the future, it's the land of tomorrow, and it's the thing that's going to take your job and replace everything you've spent your entire life building up. Or is it? Well, let's talk about it. You already know what AI is. You've seen the US presidents play Minecraft together. You've seen those weird images of Heisenberg riding a unicycle. And you've probably heard Drake performing the most influential song of 2022. What can I say? The future is now, old man. And if there's one thing that's been made abundantly clear, the revolution will not be televised. No, it will be AI generated. And we are absolutely hopeless to stop it. And well, that's kind of the problem, isn't it? See, as it stands right now, it's very easy to dismiss those seemingly delusional claims that AI currently stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with actual creators when you see AI-generated people with 17 fingers. But the fact of the matter is, the technology is here, and it's only going to get better and better, which is where I think many people are now beginning to feel an overwhelming sense of existential dread. Many of us are now beginning to face the reality that replacement isn't just a possibility anymore. It's now inevitable, and it isn't just the artists that are concerned. I think people in just about every field of work have some level of anxiety around the idea of AI automation, and that's a very human reaction to something that 10 years ago would have just been seen as science fiction. It only makes sense that after spending an entire lifetime developing your skills and talents only to be met with the prospect of replacement by an algorithm no less that you would have a very strong reaction to it. It's in our DNA to fear the unknown, and it's very much in our nature to find identity in the things that we do. So, as you can imagine, AI poses a major threat towards both of those departments. And to add insult to injury, there's arguably been an extremely sour taste left with those who have had their artwork literally stolen by AI so that it can replicate unique styles that have been curated over the course of a lifetime. Let alone the fact that one of the key reasons why the Writers Guild of America have gone on strike is because Hollywood is literally refusing to guarantee that writers won't be replaced by AI. This doesn't look good. But what if I told you it isn't going to be nearly as bad as you might think? What if I told you something like this has happened before? Let's go back a little bit and talk about a silly little thing we like to call the Industrial Revolution. You might have heard of this from my previous video where I talk about cleaning simulators. Trust me, it, it'll make sense if you watch it. Please just watch the video. This was a great turning point in human civilization. It was very much a changing of the guard. Out with the old and in with the new. No longer any need for the majority of hand weavers, artisans, farmers or coal miners when a big ass machine can just do it all for you. And as you might expect, it was a pretty terrible time to be any one of these people. A widespread feeling of obsolescence and displacement in a world that's changing far too quickly to adapt in. The rise of poverty and poor working conditions and a growing sense of social unrest. Strikes and protests and civil disorder in resentment to the machine that was now dominating all, which led many people to question how one was supposed to find themselves in a world that had moved beyond the need for everything they had spent their entire lives working on. And at the time, that was a pretty good question to be asking. How is someone supposed to adapt when they're a piece that no longer fits the puzzle that's been laid out for them? And the truth is, not everyone did adapt. People got left behind and taken advantage of. They were dislocated in a society that had moved beyond them, and that was the harsh reality. Adapting to this new world was not so simple, and the consequences of this were dire to say the least. When you consider all of this, it probably doesn't make you feel very good about AI, and understandably so. 
It's easy to imagine that AI is going to take over everything and leave us as a species fundamentally obsolete. That is the natural reaction to all of this, but I believe we've been thinking about all of this in the completely wrong way. And a big part of why I say this is due to the fact that this isn't the 18th century anymore. The world isn't like how it used to be. In fact, it's changing every single day. Every other decade, there's a new breakthrough in technology that changes the way we operate as a society. Whether it was the automobiles, television, computers, or the internet, the world just keeps on changing, and it's changing faster and faster, which can sound scary. And it is scary. We have no idea how the world's gonna look in five years time, let alone 20. And the prospect of things moving beyond us is intimidating to say the least, but we live at a time unlike any other. It's now easier than ever to adapt to these changes, to learn and to reintegrate yourself into a society that's moved on. We're the most connected we've ever been as a species and we've got all the information in the world literally at our fingertips. Education is no longer restricted like it used to be. Hell, it's literally encouraged. Unless of course you're an American, in which case, sucks to be you, God save the king. Jobs are of course going to be replaced, but I'll be honest, I don't think that's such a bad thing. Now, before you start hauling rocks at me, j just allow me to explain. AI probably isn't going to replace you. The more likely scenario is that it's going to make your job a hell of a lot easier. The majority of jobs that are at risk are for the most part jobs that we don't even like doing in the first place. Repetitive tasks, production lines, and bloody customer support of all things. Now, admittedly, most of the new jobs being opened up will mostly be AI or tech related, which might mean there'd need to be some level of upskilling for a lot of people, which honestly, yeah, is a bit of a pain. But again, that's just the inevitable consequence of living in a world that's constantly evolving, constantly changing. But even then, this is the same world where there's literally a YouTube tutorial on anything you can think of. Adapting in the modern age has literally never been easier. That being said, ChatGPT can offer some pretty compelling stuff, but that's only if you're able to bring up the right selection of words in order for it to give you something that's actually usable. And even then, you'll still need to go back through and rephrase a little bit here and there to make sure it still sounds human. And I guess that's the whole point I'm trying to get across here. At the end of the day, these are just tools and should be used as such to further our own creative vision. They shouldn't be used as a sole means of creating something because you're not really going to be getting anything that's truly new here. That human touch is always going to be essential to creating art that's genuinely compelling. Though with all this talk about art and artists, there is one question I keep asking myself. Is this even art? I mean, seriously, can this really be considered art? Nobody actually made this. It was literally just generated by an algorithm. There is no intention or subjectivity with this. It just uses words you've put in, cross-references those words with images that describe what you've put in, and pieces something together that vaguely matches up with what you've given it. Something can't really be art if it wasn't actually made by a person, right? But then, this kind of leads me to an even bigger question. What is art? Seriously, have a think to yourself for a second here while I quickly Google this. The expression or application of human creative skill or imagination. Ah, well, there we go. I guess that settles it. Human creative skill or imagination. Checkmate, you robotic fucks. This can't be considered art because nobody created it. There, job done. But something about this doesn't feel right to me. Art is, well, subjective. That's kind of the whole point of it. You and I can look at the same painting and see something entirely different. You might see a unique study of the human form, whereas I just see a bunch of stupid shapes slapped onto a canvas, but that's the whole beauty of it. If art was purely objective, then there'd be absolutely no room for interpretation. And by that metric, I think just about anything can be considered a work of art. This painting is obviously art, but equally, this is kind of artwork too. But it isn't just paintings. This is clearly a work of art, and to somebody, this is art. That's just how this works. Video games are art. Carpentry is art. Just keeps fucking falling apart! This sunrise is a work of art from God himself. It's all just fucking art. This building is art. This table is art. This YouTube video is art. Which means that this is probably art too, right? Of course it bloody isn't, you absolute muppet. But the way this line just goes up suddenly is a work of art. And the way that it flatlines is really, really sad and depressing. But that's just the beauty of art. We could all look at the same thing and project so many different interpretations onto it and they're all just as equally valid. Someone might look at this and see something that's uncanny and nonsensical, but you might look at it and see the future, the possibilities that are literally endless, and that's exactly why I think that of course this is art. It has to be art. I mean, 
How can it not be? The expression of human skill or imagination, the tools that created this were literally made by humans. Now, obviously, there's a very clear difference between something that's been handcrafted by a genuine artist and something that's been generated at the click of a button. And I'm never going to undervalue the time and effort that goes into making a legitimate work of art. The whole point of this isn't to say that this equals this, because it doesn't. But two things can be true. Just because these two are not in the same playing field doesn't mean they're both not technically art, but I'll be honest, this whole line of thought is kind of redundant, because at this point, whether it is or isn't art isn't really important anymore. The big area of concern now is the fact that small artists are at risk of being undercut. Commissions will be much harder to get when someone can just type in what they're looking for and have it all done for them. And I think navigating that challenge of being undercut by an algorithm is going to be the real thing people need to focus on. And I can guarantee that's going to be much easier said than done. Do I think artists are going to be replaced? No, absolutely not. To make art, real art I mean, you need that human touch. AI will make some impressive stuff, but it will never be able to make anything that's truly compelling. These current language models might know the definition of joy and pain and sadness. It might know how to describe what loss is, but it will never be able to know what it feels like. What it feels like to lose a loved one. What it's like to achieve your childhood dream. It will never know how to truly feel like we do because it will never be able to have those experiences. The best it will ever be able to do is just pretend to know those feelings. And well, I guess that's where we come in. So, to go back on myself and what I said at the start of this video, replacement isn't inevitable, but it is very possible. As a species, we just have to keep learning, keep adapting, keep fine-tuning our hobbies and skills, and keep looking for ways to expand our horizons, because if we don't, we're just going to be left behind in a world that's moved on. And that's no good for anybody.